What's up, my boy? What's happening? What's up, guys? It's already December 2023. It's crazy. This year has flown by. This is the start of an epic vlog series. I think you guys are really going to enjoy, and it's going to finish the year off pretty strong. Something really cool to follow along with. What, what's behind me? My 2022 Road Glide Standard, and then we have the 21? 2020, I 2020 think. 2020 CBO. Yeah. So it's going to be a little bit of a bagger shootout, right? 107 versus uh, 117. Yeah. Let's see what the real difference between them is. We're going to take these bikes over to a dyno. I got a buddy of mine out in Mojave, California. It's a Skunk Works test facility, and his name is Alan McBee. So Alan is a legend. He used to actually tune Lamborghinis, V12 Lamborghinis, That's when they had 12 carburetors. That's really sick. He used to make exhaust systems for them. This was back in the, I think like the 80s or something. But he's got some of that history there. He's got a Skunk Works facility, and he's got a dyno. And we're going to be able to pull these bikes up on the dyno, see what what they can put down before we take apart Juan's engine. Yeah, so it'll be interesting, right? I mean, we've ridden both of these bikes to Sturgis, and I mean, when we're both cruising, it's there's no difference, right? We're both going 80, but I have noticed a difference when we're trying to pass people, but it's it'll be interesting to put a number to that. Like, what is the, the real difference? Like, to yeah. the higher horsepower? And then, uh, like you said, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what a cam chest and yeah. all that setup does. Like, so if you guys remember, Luke over at Fueling sent him a full cam chest kit, and a couple yeah. of you have been asking, "Where's the kit? Why well, haven't you put it on yet?" It's in my. It's at the shot. We haven't put it on for this reason. Right? I wanted to get a nice little baseline comparison. And again, that's kind of been like the whole theme of this bike, like how much budget, like budget friendly bagger and then see how close we can get to CBO without yep. like off the bat spending like yeah you know, as much big, as that bike costs yeah, yeah. yeah cool so let's get this started it's about lunchtime we're gonna get on the road grab some lunch and head out it's about two hours north to Mojave California and let's get this party started I know we're gonna wait until the sun goes down to get tacos what's close to here is in and out and it's close to the freeway I don't know what do you guys think there it is in and out fast and easy in and out does your bike say? It says 77. I don't know. There's different numbers. 22, 107. Okay. This is a little more. It says 107. It says 92.5. So my bike, 2020 CBO on this website, Web Bike World, is that what you were on too? Mine doesn't say a horsepower, but mine says that the bike has 125 foot pounds of torque. 110 foot pounds of torque. It's ultimate specs. The bike produces 105 horsepower and 125 pound foot pounds foot pounds of torque. Your bike? That's what it claims my bike has. We'll see. Yeah. How's that for an entrance? What's going on? Good to see you. Yeah, it's a little windy. <laughs> I gave Juan a little bit of background how I've been coming out here for like over a decade now, probably 12, 13 years. All of them, the Countach's. Jim no had way. what they called an LM04. Okay, that's the truck? Is that it's the SUV? It's a truck, yeah. yeah. Kind of looks like the Humvee. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, with a V12 engine in it. That's awesome. <laughs> 
That's was when that? I met him, and then I went to work for him in 93. D12 Engineering. Yeah, I was the engine builder, dyno tuner, wow, that's fabricator. Decker made a mile. That's so sick. There it is. Dude, leave that crossed up. And this is how long I've been coming here. Like, I was still riding. I got one on the wall, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be really careful with it because it's the only one he ever gave us. <laughs> That's valve a cover? valve cover for a big block Chevrolet. And why would fueling make a valve cover for a big block Chevy? Because we had big block Chevrolet heads, two okay. valves. Yeah. So one of the things is I was explaining how Jim Fueling was an inventor and he had all these patents and he made different engine developments that he would like sell to the manufacturers. And that's why fueling is spelled F-E-U-L-I-N-G because that was his last name. Jim Fueling was the founder of Fueling Parts. Luke sent out cams and a cam chest kit for Juan's 107. And basically we want to get a base number like where this bike started at. And we want to kind of put it head to head against the CBO. Both bikes are just stock other than pipes on them. We do have Vance and Heinz fuel pack tuners, but we want to maybe like take the tunes off. We'll be able to put them back to stock pretty easy. Like okay. just put the stock calibration on it. And then we want to just compare stock versus stock. That would be a great comparison. Yeah. yeah. All right, so before we get into throwing these bikes on the dyno and checking the numbers that they give us, Alan, show Juan a, a engineer's dream come true. Cause I know Juan would have a lot of fun over here if he could hang out for a little bit. Fabrication area, uh, we got some cylinder heads in progress for the race bike. More will turn into the machine shop area. Pretty much can make just about anything we want except for milk metal, except for we do that once in a while. Juan is a aerospace engineer and he was over at Vance and Heinz for seven years before he came over to thrashing. On the docks. Who's Doc? I can't remember his last name now. I just call him Doc. This is one of the first W3s that we did back in 2000. Wow. He's had it and then it's here now because it's set in storage. Some of the wiring went bad. Yeah. So it had some shorts. So I'm putting a new dash on it, a new instrument panel. Are these carbon wheels from the, like the 2000s-ish? Yeah, the, the Buells. I think these are off of Buell. Wow. Damn, that's pretty sick. So I've got to ride one of these and dude, I came out of the corner in like first gear, it revs to redline in like, the, yes. you can't even shift fast enough. Like my <laughs> first time I was like bouncing off the rev limiter between every shift. <laughs> and then like after you get used to it, then you just realize you just start shifting before you think you should shift yes. just to make it in time. You, you know? just put it up in third gear and take off. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Were so. you involved in the development of the W3? The whole thing. Yeah. I built the very first one, hand built it. Oh, no way. So this is basically a twin cam engine. We took a twin cam case and cut it off, put a block of aluminum on there and drilled all the holes, added another camshaft. And the original one was all chain drive. So when we were done building this engine, they had to make eight new parts to make this motorcycle. And the rest was all off the shelf. The rest off components. the shelf. Wow. All the stuff up here is all twin cam. All the cams are yep. twin cam. Now they're developed and they're, they're gear drive. The original one was all welded together, hand machine cases, hand machine covers. We casted engine cases, casted cylinders, casted heads. So pretty much other than the rocker boxes and what's in the rocker yep. box itself is all fueling now. First one was in a 97 Dyna. And I took and just put it in a fixture, put it in a fixture in the steering head, and we cut the frame off and extended it out. Built these tubes, these are your original design tubes. Wow. Rebuilt the, extended the tube on Harleys and had the slip in front end and then put it back together. The very first one was a Dyna. And then we built this frame with Craft Tech. We used to go to Hollister uh, for 4th of July and there's a bike rally out there. And be I was little, I was probably in middle school, but I saw W3 yeah, out there. I don't remember what year it was. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, you guys are the only ones that have ever done this, right? So I've been the only one that's built the engines. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Just like full circle coming back and meeting the people that created it. Buying Pig 3.0. I was going to ask if it was here. Probably the first race fueling did it where they put FGR 250s on, huh? Oh yeah, because the other bike had the conventional Right side style. up. Yep. 
Yeah. Yep. So those are the same forks that we put on the Lowrider ST that we built. It's got the thrash and shift arm over here, I think, or close to it. It's a little custom modded, isn't it, for two locations? Cameron got all these parts. Cameron was involved in getting the shifter together, getting the linkage through the primary, because we had the, you know, the road guide linkage. Yeah, you before. had like a gnarlier. Yeah, and it was just too much, too yeah. much monkey motion going on. Yeah, you guys built this by quick, right? It was like... Oh, it was a thread. <laughs> yeah. Dude, look at the size diameter of this exhaust. What is that, a two inch? Dude, the primary's on yeah. this. Yeah, two inch nasty. headers on it. How big is that collector going to? Three inch collector. Look at yeah. that. Look at the drop trees on it. Saw, yeah. That's what I was With the clip-ons. All the across. Brake. Air ducts for the brakes. Dual oil cooler on there now. Before with the Harley ones, yep. and we went to this one. And for a cool day that we had, the oil temperature was a little high, so we're probably gonna still have to add another oil cooler. A lot of the people have been running them up here. Is there a reason why you guys didn't? Air dynamics. Down? The other issue that we've also heard about is that the air, once it gets through there, like with the radiators, the rider is getting all of the heat. Hot air. There's a weight limit on these, or can you get it down Six, as low as you want? 625 pounds. 625. Once we've picked these numbers out, you think a cam will make his bike comparable to the 117? Stock 117, cam, oiling system, pipe, and a fueling air filter. It'll definitely help, but I don't think it'll get close to that 117. No. He doesn't think you're getting there, Juan. How do they compare on the road? You guys ride a lot. On though. the road? Honestly, I, like right at the, when we dump the clutch, they're pretty close, right? Yeah, but that's mostly like rider skill. I'm pretty good. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs> uh, I would say it's more like once you're up in the gears and you go to pass a car, even if we both drop one gear and I go to go, he's kind of still that's back the there. That's the biggest difference. Like, like, which one's going first? Cause we need to put the stock to Let's put up. mine on. All right. All right, here's the deal guys. They have the Vance and Hines fuel packs, but we're going to delete those. We're going to go full stock. Yep. No tune. Mine has the Bassani True Dual full header system, but it has the stock uh, high flow air filter that came on the CVO. What do you got going, anyways? I have the stock one. You gonna replace it? I'm gonna put the flashing stock map back to the bike. Okay. You check the tire pressure before you throw it on. We always set it at 40 pounds because that's a good safe pressure because it keeps the tire from folding around the tube. Diameter of the tire can change the gear ratio, which, which will affect the results. Yeah. Obviously you deleted the tune, yeah. which I'm happy with because I never paid attention to the tune that was on this bike before we went to Sturgis this year because I always rode the bike with the stock exhaust until like a year ago. So I never tuned it, it's fine. But since this last Sturgis, I was only getting 200 miles to a tank. And we just filled up and we rode 100 miles to get here. Uh -huh. And I only had a half tank, not even. I'm curious what it is stock, the air fuel. And then if we do throw that fuel pack back on, what it's at and or if like we can yeah, adjust, adjust it, it to be better. Yeah, for sure. I didn't throw a tune in this bike to get more power. I just threw a tune in so it ran right with yeah. the new system on it. That's it. Has this ever been on the dyno before? The CVO? No. Uh... no. Through my buddies at K&N. Uh -huh. Basically, like through them is how I got connected with fueling. My Dyna that I currently have, I remember he he called me and he was like, "Hey, your crank run out's like seven thou. We normally wouldn't build the engine." And I was like, "Just build it." <laughs> it ran ever since and never had an issue. <laughs> never had an issue, and that was a long time ago. And the bike was dynoed on here, and thank you, sir. And then we designed, developed all of the uh, AR system, For it. soft tail system, and dynoed it a bunch here. Guns. Yep. So all of the M8 soft tail exhaust systems, dual and two into one, were all designed and cut up and changed Red out here. Yeah. And then Cameron made them and built them so they fit the bike. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs>
and these are stock wheels. put the tune that was on it and well, see let, if it makes a difference. Let's see what he said. We do the different gears because of the speed limiter. Yeah, it yeah. was running. And yeah, we were noticing it hitting it'll fast. Actually show you some different torque numbers. So what we do is we use six gear, which is run one and two for the torque number. So it makes about 120 foot pounds of torque. And then we use fourth gear because it's more RPM, or actually it did better in fifth gear this time, 97. It was probably getting hot here, a temperature was coming up and it probably pulled a little timing out. I would call this thing, because of the speed limiter in it, it's hard to get real good numbers. So I call this thing a 120.97. Tuner that was on it, mm -hmm. we deleted. Didn't we delete the speed yeah. limit? We deleted it, pretty sure. Now that you put it back to stock, it's there. Yeah, so now that it's back to stock, how was the air fuel ratio with a pipe, no tune? Pretty lean at idle, um, but under load and stuff, it's it's running pretty decent. Wide open throttle, I didn't see anything that, you know, caught my attention. Would you mind we, we throw the tune back in it? No, not at all. Just we'll see. Just change the notes. And... Yeah, see what it does. Bass, no tune, just a pipe thrown on this 117. Alan, who I trust with tuning my bikes. So we're gonna throw the tune that I've been running back in it and see how it compares. If we lose power, gain power, get a better air fuel ratio. I do know that I lost MPGs with that tune. I wouldn't want it any leaner than it is out here at 5,000 and after 5,000, I wouldn't want it any leaner than that. What would be an ideal number that someone would look for there? After about 4,500, 5,000, you want to see 13 twos to 12 eights. Okay. And so leaner is a higher number, is a higher richer number. is a... Yeah, is a lower number. And because we're talking air fuel ratio, we're not talking lambda. Yeah. If you're talking lambda, it's the other way. Got to wait 30 seconds and back to the other map you had. I wasn't happy with the other map. Bike MPGs were awful. Switch it back and ride it home, then you got a direct comparison because you rode it up here. Yeah. It was just like an off the shelf map too. We didn't like try to do anything with yeah. it. We could definitely try to adjust it, but I think we should try to ride stock yep. to see I what mean, the this will tell us how much it changes right here. Yeah, for sure. I rode here and my I burned more than half a tank. Look, the tank was full when I left. Difference in the air fuel ratio. Is it? It was in the 15s and 16s at idle before. Now so this is, this is this is gonna come through warm up for just a couple minutes. So if you guys can't see, these are the air fuel ratios. Front and rear cylinder, front, rear. And right now it's in the blue, which it's reading in the 12s, which means it's much richer. So we'll see. That's a huge difference. <laughs> like, so you're saying that's too rich at idle, you think? That's a bit, yeah. <laughs> so you're working in percentage. So to yeah. get that to 14, that's 25%. Numbers don't lie. torque but it didn't make any more horsepower and how'd the air fuel ratio look i know it was rich the at the bottom the air fuel ratio is a lot better at wide open throttle the horsepower didn't change but the durability of the motor just changed because the air fuel ratio is better it made more torque because the air fuel ratio was richer in the spots where it was lean before guys we will have all of these dyno run graphs on our thrashandsupply.com blog page um, in the photos so if you want to go look at the curves look at all this stuff we will have it posted on our website actually it lost a foot pound of torque and lost lost power but if this was your bike would you rather it fuel pack piggybacked on it or would you rather it run raw the wide open throttle area rather have this calibration in it yeah but 
the park throttle and idle stuff needs to be fixed in the, in the fuel pack. Okay. We actually lost a little power, and that was because we were so lean before. We lost, so I thought it had gained torque. Maybe it was, yeah, it was that one I was looking at. So it's, it's definitely a lot richer. It's a lot safer. This, this in here could be cleaned up a lot. But power-wise, like I said, when we first ran it, it's going to be max power because of the air-fuel ratio. Like I said, I almost didn't really notice too much of a difference in power riding it with tune or without, other than filling up way faster. It, and you notice that with the Vance and Hines, your speed limiter was off a little bit. Yep. So it's off. So see the difference? We went up against the 608 miles an hour, where this one ran on to 120, even though it wasn't really making any power. Yeah. It wasn't really off. It was still letting the engine rev more. Yep. And then as you guys know, Alan is very experienced at tuning. He prefers other tuning systems. What's your favorite tuning system to work with, Alan? The TTS, by far. It gives you the most capabilities and it. It's not a piggyback system on on the bike. Yep. It, you're basically doing changes in the ECM, so they're hard changes. Yep. Juan and I only threw on this fuel pack system because um, it was convenient. You know, we, we didn't have time to make it up here and we just kind of wanted to make sure the, the engine ran safe, which is kind of what it did. So really it was just kind of a band-aid fix for what we were trying to do at the time. Sometimes it's what's available. Yeah. You, know? you notice with the CVOs, when I first go to take off in first gear, it goes to about 2,500 and then just sits there. Yeah. I have to do it in first and second gear. It has to recognize, it takes for a minute for the ECM to recognize that it's in a stationary position and the front wheel's not rolling. So when I first go to take off, it just goes to 2,500 and just sits there. And then I have to wait for it to let it go. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's I like, did notice. I wasn't sure why it was doing that. Yeah, it's like it realizes it's like traction control. Like front end's not moving. Why is the back end moving? Yeah, Who's doing throttle. a burnout? Yeah. You're not doing any more throttle. <laughs> Cut him off. Yeah, who's doing a wheelie? <laughs> All right, so I think we got our numbers. We're not gonna change the tune. Now we're gonna go head to head, pull on uh, Juan's 107 2022 Road Glide. Uh, I need to put the stock tune back on on this thing. I got it. He's got it. He's got a little handy dandy toolkit. Yeah, I'm gonna put my tuner on so I can put the stock tune back on. A uh, good apple to apple comparison. No cheats, no nothing. I love it. All right, so one down and we're over a, almost 100 horsepower. That's pretty good. And to the tire. 120 torque. It's pretty good. To the tire. I'm pretty happy with that. The 107 is going to have a tough uh, battle to. <laughs> All right, Alan, we're ready to go. So all of this gives the computer accurate RPMs and yes, ignition, the RPMs, and then it compares it to the rear wheel acceleration. So that way, it gives you RPM versus rear wheel. It gives you information like clutch slippage, tire slippage. Your bike's like three, four inches shorter than mine because the front wheel is so much bigger oh, on mine. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? So he had to adjust the length of the dyno and bring the bike back a little oh, bit wow. to sit on the... On well, the yours is a 21. This is a what, 19? I'm just surprised like how much I had to move. I mean, it should be a half the difference of the what is diameter, it? right? Yeah, but it seemed like it moved more than that. Oh gosh, there you go, line about three <laughs> inches to everyone. How is this PSI? 32. 32? What are you doing? Trying to wheelie? Yeah, dude, this is a wheelie bike. Hey, I'm just having a wheelie good time. The 107 has a shorter stroke, right? It's a different crank than the 117. Yeah. But it's got a big old metal plate in there. You could almost it's eat a taco a, off of that thing. Look in there. I just, I'd be curious to see how this thing runs. Hopefully we can get some sort of reading off of it. We won't be able to compare front to rear but we can still get a reading. Yeah, just per foot, yeah. like there's a yeah. metal cap in there. Back pressure. That's the sniffle. <laughs> in case anyone is wondering, Lance terminology, that's the sniffle. <laughs> there's a lot of people that call and say their tuners are like, oh, we can't get a reading without extra bonds. You can, you just need this. Yeah. And then you could snake it in there and get a pretty decent reading. Yeah. Well, if you were doing, so what I do is I just kind of stick it in one of the holes there a little bit. And that's how you get. Oh, two readings from the tailpipe. 
The little engine that could. Little 107. Hey, it took me to Sturgis twice so far. Arizona. We're gonna run this, and then we're gonna wake it up with some cams. Yeah, and then when you, you know, when you wake up an engine, you don't bathe yet. You start ripping it even harder. Smells like horsepower, baby. Yeah. So what do we get? Uh, peak torque, 108. Oh, that's pretty good, dude. 108? Yeah. Peak power, 83.94. Almost 84. So that's not that. But what are we at off compared to the so CVR? 117. What gear, or, what gear do you want to compare? Oh, we can pull it up right here. Uh, let's do yeah. fifth. Yeah, let's do like the, the fifth gear pull. I like the rev limit on the 107. It does a little da -da -da -da. on <laughs> yours. It just lays over. It's like yeah. he holds it. Yeah, it's like. Mm. So we've got fifth to fifth. The CVO with the 117 put down 97 horsepower and 117 foot pounds of torque. The 107, your road glide, put down 83.9 horsepower and 105 torque. Right around 10 under on the horsepower and right around 10 under on the torque. Yep. Cool. Like if we're just using like simple numbers, 12. Which cams is Luke sent? Did Luke send you? We just told him some like base, like simple camp Bolton cams. I don't know. What would you think he sent? He probably either sent you the 543s or the 572. You're gonna either one of those cams. You're gonna get really close. Oh, that's gonna <laughs> be interesting. So what you're saying is that right when we put Juan's cam in and he beats me, then I gotta go back no. put cams in the CVO. <laughs> I don't know if we'll quite get that much torque, but I think that it'll gain the horsepower. That'll be pretty badass though. So let's test it real quick to kind of see what it did with the other tune you were running. Yeah. And see if it's better, worse, or about the same. Did it get an air fuel reading on this one? It only gets it at wide open throttle because there's just no flow back there. Yeah. Where were we at? 13, 12? Yeah. See, the air feels not bad on this. Yeah. This one isn't as leaned out as the stock CVO. Like the power keeps climbing. It hits the rev limit, mm -hmm. but almost like if you would have revved it out more, it would have kept, kept climbing. So what you're talking about is right there, yeah? yeah. Right here. But like, see where the the, the run stops? It's still making yeah. power up yeah. there. It gets it gets just over five where it peaks out. Pretty good. I'm I'm happy. I'm not seeing it like dr drastically fall off as it gets close to the red line. But yeah, let's put that other tune on and see what it does. It's interesting because the air fuel ratio on this stock tune was pretty down. Which you're getting a mediocre reading because it's not all the way up to the yeah. like head pipe like mine was. It's mixing front and rear cylinder. Yeah. Get it! Shows a lot leaner. So uh -huh. it put the, the it put the race tune in. The race tune. Yeah. <laughs> so so how was the air fuel ratio that time reading? Horsepower went up. Well, the torque was 109, and the horsepower went up to 85.9. So it went up two horsepower and how much torque? Three torque. So we went up, but its air fuel ratio went leaner. So what did we get on the well, reading? You went from 12 sevens to 14 ones. 
So it's on maximum lean right now. So it's it did the race tune. <laughs> it went, op it went opposite. Race. It's yeah. a drag race tune right there. Yeah. <laughs> so fuel pack doesn't know what it's doing. It's mixing up the air fuel ratio. That right there is 10% leaner. So just so you guys know, when he's pointing at that, we're looking at this right here and he's moving the mouse back and forth. That's the air fuel ratio right there. That'll be four to five miles to go. So what would you recommend if this was your bike and your only options were the tuner or no tuner? What would you rather run? Right now the tuner looks better on the dyno because of the lean conditions, but I would not let the bike go like that because it wouldn't last very long. I mean, I'm if glad it, we're testing it. If the it. guy was drag racing it, then I would take and use that for, if you're gonna go drag racing, Yeah. I would do that. But if you're gonna go cruising or if you're gonna be out where you're wide open throttle for a long period of time. The last two Sturgis the rides. Yeah. <laughs> you, better, you better have the stock tune in it because it's going to be pretty lean. And it's okay for a short period of time, but the longer it sustains that, the temperature just starts to accelerate. I'm excited to put a cam in it yeah. and then get a proper tune and see where it's at. Yeah, so this is basically just the start of a fun week for us. So we come up to Mojave, tomorrow we're gonna wake up, we're gonna ride down to Oceanside, let this thing cool down, throw the cams in it, and then in the next couple of days when your dyno is back open, come back up, see what it does. Are you gonna tune it with the Vance and Heinz thing? Do you? No. Is I that think... adjustable or does it only do auto tune? It's adjustable, but I just don't know enough. Does the auto tune have target can you set a target fixation for it i believe so give it a target and then and then then just ride it and let it auto tune itself yeah it, it, i'm pretty it should be able to do that the only It'd thing be is a lot quicker to be able to punch some numbers in because i mean to really tune this thing we got to put some bongs or do something different with the exhaust because gotcha. i can only get part throttle and we're not getting any cylinder separation right now we're yeah. getting front and rear at the same spot i could easily put some bungs in it before we bring it back yeah. well maybe even while the pipe's off they're doing the cams like we can have the stuff to put bungs in it they have all yeah. the welding equipment up there we could probably get it done and do you recommend that we ha grab another tuner or or you at least investigate what to do with that tuner. I mean, we imagine that Luke could put something in it there, like to get us to ride up here. Yeah, I think we could get it here. Like if Luke doesn't have this, this should have adjustments for that. It has like VE, like volumetric efficiency stuff yeah. where I know yeah, you that's like- what, That's what we need to adjust. I would try to stay with the same tuner because one of the principles in research and development is the more ch things that you change at one time, the less constants that you have. And the more constants you can see that you can maintain in testing, then you can get a better indication of what the results are. If you lose five or six constants and then all of a sudden the numbers are up, you don't know what, what made it go yeah. up. You're gonna try to figure out how to tune it with yeah. that tuner. I'll try to do some research and- uh, Talk to, to some of your old coworkers yeah. and maybe know what the deal is. And Yeah, and if Cameron can get us a bung put in somewhere right here where we can put the O2s in there, which we'll need to have if we're gonna do a full tune up on it and be able to do adjustments. If you can figure out how to get to the program or if you need to bring a laptop so we can get in and change the VE tables, we can data log it, monitor it, see where we need to make changes. And then, oh yeah, I put it on a disc or put it on a floppy job and put it on my laptop and then I'll send it to you by email. My bike by itself, his bike by itself, and then our two best ones. What I'll do is because we did two runs of each one, I'll just yeah. pick out the high and delete the lows and then you'll get all three gears on each one. Cool. And then we can compare fifth to fifth. Thing did pretty good. <laughs> Little 107. So we got some awesome numbers. We're almost within 10 horsepower and 10 torque. Pretty close, I'm impressed. I didn't think it was gonna do that much torque, like it was 109. And what was um, mine? 120. Yeah. So I'm so, 11 torque more. And then I was 85. 85 horsepower and I was 97. Both of these motorcycles mechanically efficient the same. You got the difference in the numbers because of the 10 cubic inches. Mechanically, efficiently, yeah. they're both pretty, pretty close to the same. So, so we're gonna improve the efficiency of the 107. For the first that's round. A correct, that's a correct yeah. statement. Now we improve the efficiency of, of the 107 one. when we put the cam in it. So, but that'll be matter. just this one. So this week we'll do his. Yeah. Then I'm gonna get jealous. Whoa, 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 then I'm gonna get yeah, jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The and then we're gonna go back right, out look, and do mine. The 107's gonna reign king for a little bit. This frog leaping never stops. 
<laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, and then I'll come back with the 131. <laughs> really curious what we could pull out of yours with just like you said, a simple bolt-in cam. This was a fun start to this whole week's vlog. So we're out here in Mojave, California, which is 100 miles out from our shop. We're gonna pull the bike off the lift. We're gonna head back towards the San Fernando Valley. By then, it should be about five o'clock. The pop-up street vendors should be starting to show oh, face, wow. and hopefully there's some good trompos and we can get some good tacos. It'll be in the low 50s by the time we get on the road. Yeah, let's see if I have another. I don't think I have another layer. I got a vest, I got our windbreaker on, and then under that, I got a flannel, and I may even throw in a hoodie. And then I got our mission gloves. Thank you for the day. Good to see You're you welcome. again. Yeah, yeah awesome. thank you. Appreciate You're you letting welcome. us use your dyno. We're gonna see you in like a week. So we'll be back here. His bike's gonna be modded, and we're gonna take you guys along for that whole ride, so. I'm so glad I got these gloves, hey, bro. Are we both still running the tunes? Uh, I'm still running Are the you tunes. gonna run the hot rod tune? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, are you gonna put the stock one on yours or what? What do you think I should do? Stock tune or? Yeah. Let's see what happens. Cause guys, I ran this thing. Change the fuel mileage. Was terrible. And I bet, and I bet you'll have a better throttle response and power. All right, hook me up Juan. Go back to the stock tune Larry on this thing. That easy? Just like that, brother. Full tank, trip one was 113, clear out trip B. And let's get back on the road. Let's go find some tacos in the valley. And they got the potatoes you've been begging for. It's gonna hit the spot. Look at that thing torched up right there. They're looking proper. Of course, I'm gonna get tacos in the Mulita. That's the program. Una Mulita. Three fast store. Tacos. Okay, you didn't load no potatoes on there? You got a little extra bag. I got a little, I got a little potato here, yeah. Thank you. Oh, you got a horchata? I have to, brother. Damn. <laughs> Onion, I already got too many. I'm like a little bite side ones. Fast, Jesus, look at the spoon they gave you, dude. I'll feel this in the morning. You didn't even like hold that thing up. I've been craving good tacos and it's hitting the spot. Can you even see that? Mmm. I only burned a quarter tank to get here. Which is similar to what I did. Well, we're thinking bike's getting better gas mileage because now I'm on par with your bike. Yeah, and I mean, the stock tune is running leaner. I you, smoked it. That's the fastest I ever seen you smoke four <laughs> tacos, basically. Yeah. I'm regretting not buying like six more. Yeah. All right, guys, we're on the corner of Mason and Sherman Way in the San Fernando Valley. Paloma, Las Palomas. Las, Las Palomas. Taco stands popping off. There's a bunch of people in line. We had a rad day. We got to see really what your bike put down on the ground and what my CVO put down. You... I was impressed with, honestly, with both. The, this was 120 torque. Like, that's pretty good for a stock like yeah. Harley. And then yeah, I was impressed at how close this was. Cubic inch, 107, 117, 10 cubic inch off. And they were about 10 horsepower off. Yeah. But like also, he said we're gonna improve that efficiency uh, by throwing a cam in there, and uh, I'm excited to see the difference. Yeah. This vlog series ain't over yet. We're gonna wake up tomorrow morning and head over to Oceanside to check out fueling and get some help throwing some cams in Juan's Road Glide. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Hopefully we have a little teaser for you of what's about to go down tomorrow at the end of this. We'll see you guys on our way to Oceanside next time. See you later. We're gonna go see if we can juice up Juan's bike right now. All of the baffles. Open it up. Going in a stock, Larry, but it's coming out with a whole lot more horsepower. 